so this is Arthur. Um, it is another traditional farm head, far, Hill Farmstead Ale. Um, they do a lot of different ones. I believe this one has some hops in there. Um, this is the first time trying it for the three of us. Uh, so here we go. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it reminds me of like antique books. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's, a, that's all I got. As soon as I taste it, uh, I fully expected not to have a sour at all. And this Wait, is really? like, and this is kind of. I actually expected like more of like a like a hoppier type. Wow, this is six point two. Dude, I expected six point two. Whoa, that's wow. Oh, something else. Whoa. Wow, this is, a, this is like a nice change. Mm -hmm. Everything we've done so far has been so hoppy yeah. and like so like I eat. Yeah. Um, that this is like this is a nice. This is a very easy does it. Like I was worried that the volume of beer that we we're gonna be drinking this time compared <laughs> to everything else was gonna be rough. Mm -hmm. um, but this is not gonna be tough at all. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a very easy drink here. Yeah. Did you say balanced? Uh, this is definitely balanced because like it's not overwhelmingly sour. Um, right. My issues with sour beers and coasts and things like that is when they don't balance it out. So it's either so much acidity up front that you're like, wow, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Or you're waiting for the flavor at the end. It's never usually like across the board, but this is like probably the fourth or fifth one. A different one, I should say, I've had from Hill Farmstead. I'm multiple of them have been YouTube. Um, and they, this is like, this is easy to drink. Like I'm upset that I didn't open these bottles sooner uh, because they're like they're <laughs> so delicious. Good. Like this is like unreal how good these are. It's like obnoxious. Like I this reinvigorates my ability to drink beer every time I have one. Yeah. Like every time I have one of these, I'm like shit. This is why I drink this beer. I feel like these things taught me. I, I liked sours before, but it taught me what a real sour is. Mm -hmm. Like this is complex. It has like more flavors than just sugar and yeah. sour. And a soup. Yeah. yeah. It's. Um, this is yeah. This is wonderful. Um, it's and like you said, like I being not a sour person, this makes me like believe in them yeah. like a little bit. Like they're not like not all sours are created equal. Yeah. Um, and just like not all IPAs are created equal, but we know that because everybody is you know tried a different variation of a different thing at some point in time. Yeah. Just like they've you know gotten really really insane with stouts and they've added like marshmallow and coconut. Yeah. Caramel, and like this, that, and the other thing, yeah. like, um, because it pairs better with, you know, dark, heavier beer. Do you think that sour ever becomes? I don't want to call it mainstream, but like, do you know? I yeah, think, I think it's kind of mainstream. So sours, I think, for a very long period of time, have been uh, designated toward like the hipster crowd mm -hmm. because like they want to be able to have something that's niche, but they don't want to like actually give into something heavy like a double IPA mm -hmm. um, because they're not actual beer drinkers, uh, but they still want to be like, well, I had <laughs> like I had this ghost from this place, so like I'm cool, like mm -hmm. type of thing. Okay, like you had this 3.9 percent alcohol, basically a seltzer. Um, from one of our, like, one of our craft breweries, yeah. so, like, that, that doesn't <laughs> yeah. mean anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you didn't do anything <laughs> for me, like, at all, like, yeah. type of deal. Like, usually those are the afterthought beers that, you know, like, us real beer drinkers are using as, like, a fucking palate yeah. Like, not something that's, <laughs> like, you know, like, we're not doing that for, like, for shits and gigs. Yeah. And, like, we're, we're also not crushing 16 of them either. Like, we want to do mm -hmm. that, like, you know, just go out and get some fucking Trulies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, that being said, you have something like this and you're like, like I could definitely have another one of these. If I had another one of these bottles lying yeah. around, I would have another one of these. Yeah, yeah. Like, because like, they're not like, they're not bad at yeah. all. And if like somebody asked me, like, do you want to have a sour? I would say like, if you have something like this, I'll take I got you back. Yeah. Like, I'll be able to play. So you think that if, if you were sitting back on like a, you know, Friday afternoon, doing whatever, like watching a hockey game or something, you could kill a bottle to, to sure. the face. For sure. Just have like three glasses and yep. yeah, and I would be content with it too. Like yeah. that's a, like if I felt like doing it and like that's something that like caught my eye. Yep. Now I know that like I'd be totally fine with it. Like yeah. it changes my each time I've had one of these, it changed my perspective of going up there mm -hmm. because I'm such an IPA heavy person 
that I care more about the cans that like I can take <laughs> home than I care about some of these bottles because I say to myself like ah oh, this it's just gonna be another one of those bottles like mm-hmm. type of thing and like you know I never give it the credit that it's that it's due yeah but now like every time I go back to Hill Farmstead I'm gonna try to get every one of these bottles because every single one of them has been amazing. Like there's not been a single one that's been like shit. Like it's it's amazing. Like there's it's like obnoxious how good they are. So I've had this one and I've had the the one I the last time I was here we had another sour. Have you had other? Yes. Uh, so I've had um, we have had one that was like an oak style. Um, they call it like a Belgian ale, mm-hmm. which is like uh, more. Of that like traditional kind of more German style where it's like it's tougher. Um, definitely has higher alcohol content um, yeah. for sure. Uh, but again, like that's a, that's a very tough style to get yourself into. Yeah. It's not something that like you would like gravitate toward that way. And I like it. Like mm-hmm. that was not if that was on a menu, that would not in any way be my first choice. I probably wouldn't even be my fifth choice or my seventh choice really? like type of deal. Um, but we. Um, I've had that with a friend, and it was it was pretty good. Yeah, you did it, you did it. Um, and it was it wasn't like tough for me to drink mm-hmm. um, type of thing. Where other ones you can really like kind of screw this up. Yeah. Um, I've had a stout by those guys, and they're ridiculously good. Um, and I've also had IPAs by them, yeah. and they're ridiculously good. Yeah. We had a pilsner earlier in the night by the same people, and like they're not like they have not struck out yeah. one time. Like not like not anywhere near it. Like it's, it's crazy. if we were. Considering this like baseball terms, yeah. they were going for extra bases every time. Yeah. Um, there's there's no singles, yeah. there's no locks, they're not striking out, there's yeah. nothing like that. Um, yeah, when a beer like changes your idea of that genre of beer that you just had, like and, and again in my mind that's these sours both have changed my whole percep- per, uh, perception of sours. That like shows you that there is like something more to that brewery. How how are you coming up with that? Is that years? Is that 30 years of experimenting? Or is yeah, that a couple like, lucky like, yes, swings? Yes, I completely agree. Which one? And like, how much did you, how much effort did you put in to create this in the first place? Yeah. Like type of thing, like how much time did it take so you? So many to beers tasted out? and like, there's yeah. just something missing. I gotta right. add a little something else. And as someone that's not a sour person, like if you were to be around a group of friends that necessarily weren't huge beer people, mm. and someone asked you like, well, what's your favorite sour? Like, would you instantly say something like this? Like, would you be like, well, I had this really, if someone were in your, in your group of friends yeah, and they were talking about sours and they said to you like, well, I had this sour the other day. It's the greatest sour I ever had. Would you instantly chime in and be like, well, I had this Hill Farm said one and be like, this will outdo anything you've ever had. Like, exactly. is that like your instant, like instantaneous thing? Like to me, like this type of beer is like when we talk about Tom Brady, like, yeah. like, it's, <laughs> like it's our instant trump card, like yeah. instantaneously, like, well, yeah. if you want to Six fucking Super Bowls. Yeah, okay, yeah, like, yeah. like, boom, yeah. shock up, lock. Like, like that's the end of that. Yeah. Um, like, I'm from, like, we're from New England. We've won X number of titles in the last 15 years. Like, suck it, like, type of thing. Like, <laughs> like if, if the East Coast, West Coast battle between beer ever came about again, I feel like as like these guys would be captain. our haymaker. Like, captain of yes. the <laughs> this, this would be leading the boat, yeah. like, for sure. Yep. Um, there are definitely some other amazing like breweries out there that would like be coming to to battle. We'll mm-hmm. say, um, but Dang, that would be a dope idea. Just have like a battle West Coast East Coast beers. Have like all the uh, the, the treehouses, the trilliums, the like anything from Vermont, Maine, yep. Yep. Um, New Hampshire. You start hitting things like Philly, New York, like anything mm-hmm. along those lines. Keep going down all the way to like freaking Florida yeah. versus something like California, yeah. uh, Colorado, Oregon, Washington State. Like those are those are big names. Like that would be dope. it would be sick. That and then really like the dope. equalizer would be anything from the Midwest. Yep, yep. Which would be like also just as insane because yeah. like in Chicago alone you have like at least six of them. Like, That's crazy. Did you say you, like, tour. you like this better than Trias? This is new. Nope. 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 Um, I. Ah, oh, that's yes. Oh, you yes, said that. Yes, I have. I have out loud said that I like Hill Farmstead better than Trias, and I think my rationale is I have had one or two bad Treehouse beers that mm. I have not enjoyed. Um, things that did not necessarily the style was fine. It was on target. They didn't do anything wrong. Just didn't agree with me. Um, Hill Farmstead has taken some of those same styles and produced them, and I've been like, you know what, this isn't bad. And like before, I was talking shit like about it. And that makes sour. Exactly. 
Um, that's a, like mm-hmm. I have not and never said to myself like yes, can't wait to have me a sour. Um, I think that's a huge point, right? Like when we've been kind of drinking beers together periodically for a few years now, and I feel like for a long time we were like sours just aren't my thing. Like I'll get into them eventually, but I need to find that right sour, right? Found it. And once you fucking found that right sour, you're like okay, this is bad. Yeah. I put that on the on the uh, on, on the, the list, yeah, on for the sure. map. Sours have a new uh, respect. And I think it's nuts because like, you know, they're they're super, super traditional. Like when they say, like they have literally on their bottom, that's why I announced it like this for this video, is like it said, like traditional farmstead ale. Um, when you talk about beer, the very basic idea of beer, you have two genres. You have the lager and you have the ale. Mm-hmm. And like, that's that. Lager is typically European and like, um, will be produced at like a different temperature comparatively to an ale. Mm-hmm. So that means that they don't differentiate their IPAs versus their sours. Everything is an ale to them. Um, so every wow. single beer to them is an ale and they try things based off of the idea that an ale is an ale, which is not something you ever see anymore. That's interesting. Um, because no one ever introduces St. Adam's Boston Lager as lager. Mm-hmm. They just, they like, they have to call it Boston Lager or this, that, and the other thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not ever like just your traditional like ale, yeah. like that's board. nuts. So like their IPA, I guarantee you will also say ale. ale. I'm like on it. Wow. Like it won't say IPA, it won't say anything wow. like that. That's pretty crazy. That's so crazy. if you look at Mary that we had before, like the can, literally says it right on the can. It says like unfiltered German style Pilsner because they didn't try to make an ale. Wow. So, <laughs> Wait, so what are the, t- so there's, is there's a Pilsner, there's ale. So Pilsner is in the same boat as a lager. Okay. Those, so lager and ale are the two different ones. Okay. In IPA, um, a pale ale, uh, an amber, and anything along those lines is going to be still an ale. Okay. okay, like the basis idea of that is an ale. It's brewed in a certain way, it's fermented in a certain way, situations like that. A lager is the same as a Pilsner, um, a lager itself. A Bach, Double Bach, and I believe Hefeweizen are all the ones that go under lager. Okay. Anything else that you see, like a golden, this, that, and the other thing, is all ale. They're just fancy names for different types. Ale. Okay. Like a and ghost. those are the only, like, the, there's only those two. There's the yep. lager and there's the ale. And that's Hop. it. And it's just, it's the differences in temperature and hot conditions. That's okay. It. That was going to be my next question is what exactly the difference. So like lagers are um, stored and fermented at very cold temperatures, like under 50 degrees. So your um, your storage container and what you're brewing in um, and or filtering in mm. has to be as low as like 45, 48 degrees um, Fahrenheit, which is cold as shit. So that means you're boiling a beer to like ferment it the right way and get the flavors you want on it and then instantly bringing it from 200 plus degrees to 40 something degrees and keeping it at 40 degrees for like three weeks time um, or whatever's going on. Wow. Where an ale can sit between like 55 and 60. Okay. Um, so that's why an ale, like if you left an ale out, like we've left it out for a while now, temperature has definitely affected it. Like that's like that's just the idea of like, you know, radiation convection and evaporation. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking about those things, like this is definitely warmer than what it was mm-hmm. in there or in like in this bottle. Um, and that's why it doesn't taste any different. But a lager, if you leave a lager out, like if you leave your Bud Light out, it tastes like shit by the end of it. Um, because a lager can't handle the temperature difference. Wow. That just made me understand a whole lot of shit. Do you think geography, like back in the day, played a role in that? Huge. Uh, because lagers were, if you think about Eastern European, um, or anything in Europe, that's a very cold climate. It doesn't ever get warm. Think about the rain, the hard water, all that type of stuff. All of the lagers came from Germany. Germany's freezing. Like Finland, Czech Republic, all those type of things like that is where all of the big lagers and pilsners are made and it's not warm ever. Russia, cold, like all of those type of things are like, and then you think about like our climate, we're the ones that created the ale. We have a change in climate for all the seasons where they don't. Like crazy. It's crazy to me that like, um, it, like when, when you get into beer, when you first start it off, you might start off with some shitty Bud Light or some whatever, whatever random stuff there is. And you don't realize the chemistry and the thought and the uh, care that goes into like a really good beer. And uh, you always hear the whole thing, it's like, oh, beer's not, beer's not. But like, it's not, it's just straight up enjoying what you, what you're drinking, right? Like, 
You just yeah, enjoy yeah. what you're drinking. Right. So I think the thing that like a lot of people, and I've heard this argument before, I, I joke about the story all the time. Because, mm-hmm. you know, people have called me out and been like, you know, you're spending a lot of money on beer and like, you know, that's expensive <laughs> shit. And, like this, that, and the other stuff. Um, I remember being in line at Treehouse one time and there was a younger guy. Um, I would arguably say between like 25 and 30, long-term girlfriend. Um, and husband and wife and like that son was definitely the like the son of the parents over there and we were there early because like this is going to be a big release day and there's going to be a lot of shit so there's a lot of people in line and like some of the first people there were waiting to even wait to get talked to like that's how like how far away we were from like the whole situation and the chick started losing her patience like left right and sideways from the whole thing like was just like why are we here like why are we doing this like what's so fucking special about this and so the dad I could see him like getting a little, like, a little edgy, and he finally took matters into his own hands, and he turns around and looks at her, and he goes, he goes, you and my son have been dating for how long now? And they, like, they say the time, and I'm, I'm literally right behind him. Holy shit. And, <laughs> um, and, she, and he goes, you guys live together, right? And he, she's like, yeah. And he goes, so that means that you spend all of your time together. He goes, on an average week, he goes, how many times do you go out to eat together? He goes, like, date night, like, you go out to dinner, like not make it at home, not take out, not like anything like that. And she goes, mm, maybe two to three. He goes, okay. He goes, an average amount of cost that that is. He goes for the, the two to three times. He yeah. goes, bill per experience. He's like 40 bucks. He goes, let's say $6 for a couple of beers in entree together. He goes, $40 total. He goes, for the two of you, he's like to do that, right? He goes, so now we're gonna go back. He goes, let's call it beers. Five dollars. He goes. Let's not call him six. He goes. So two beers. He goes per person. He goes. It's twenty dollars. He goes. Just on alcohol. Mm-hmm. Times three. Sixty bucks a week. He's like. Times four. It's two hundred and forty bucks. Yeah. He goes. Right. And she goes. You're absolutely right. He goes. My son's gonna go in there right now and buy a case of Treehouse. He goes beer. He goes. Which is gonna run him about a hundred dollars. He goes. How much does that beer last him? He goes. A month. In. She goes, yeah, probably about a month. He goes, okay, so what's worse? A hundred dollars for beer waiting in this line for the one month or the $240 you're spending on food that you can make yourself and beer that you don't want to drink. And <laughs> she just goes, oh my God. He goes, so yeah, we're going to wait in line. And like, <laughs> he goes, and then like, that's that. So like when you break it down, like along those, like those lines, like yeah. it makes perfect sense. Like why you would want to. Like, why do you want to do that? Do you want to go to some bar where they upcharge some beer that you're probably able to get yep. somewhere else? Yep. Or do you want to just fucking buy it yourself yep. and drink it on your own terms? Yeah, emphasis on the fact that it's like, though all those beers are what you want to actually drink. It's not a Bud Light or a... Like, like what if you make a mistake? Now right? you're like, now you've wasted your seven bucks. Yep. So you, you buy one, you think it's great, it looks great on paper, you've never had this before, you've never met anybody, you've never talked to anybody about that thing. Yep. It comes back to you and you're like, shit, this beer isn't good. So there <laughs> goes my 16 ounces of nonsense and my seven bucks. Yep. Where I could have just gone to Trillium, bought my four pack and, and like, the average they're all five dollars, and I liked every single one of them because yeah. I knew I would. Exactly. Like <laughs> it's a, it's and, and like I mean, we were talking a little earlier about uh, like taste buds and stuff like that, and you know, I feel like some people do tend to have a very plain, a very bland taste, like palate. Yep. And so they'll have something, and it can be like pasta every day, and they're fine with it. And so I feel like those types of people are probably cool with having a Budweiser or something. That's a little yes. extra flavor from a Bud Light. They're cool with that every single day, but if you have a palate that's like kind of wanting a little bit more, like if you think that Bud Light tastes like bad burps or some shit, then yeah. you probably need to try out a, a good craft beer because yeah. there's just more going on. The thing that I've noticed a lot about uh, people that don't like craft beer, the people that are kind of like what they use that term, like sit in their way, is like a person that we were making, that we were commenting about before that was like the hero of Phillips Dale and putting it all together was Cheryl's dad. Cheryl's dad drinks one beer, one beer only, and that is Bud Heavy. Um, <laughs> red, like red bottle, red can, that's yeah. it. He does not deviate. He like, he will drink other shit beer, like like Bud Light <laughs> and Miller and like whatever, yeah. but he's not happy about it. Yeah. And like, he's the type of guy that like, when he goes to your house, if you don't have Bud Heavy there, he's pissed that you didn't provide him <laughs> Bud Heavy. Um, that's like so type of guy. And, People like that are the most interesting people for me to talk to because like I, being someone that's had so many different craft beers, yeah. 
I would love to be able to like, dude, I know I can find <laughs> something that you're gonna like yeah. and that you're gonna be able to palletize and be totally fine with. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna have to look me in the face and go, fuck, this kid was right. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like this yeah. guy was totally right, this beer is better, I just had to eat my words. Yeah. And I look at it and be like, and that was 50 years of your life that you wasted drinking shit. shit. Like, yeah. have a good time. Like eating that and yeah. as you drive home and frustratingly say to your wife, shit, that kid was right. I have a new beer. Like, <laughs> like yeah, fuck. Don't buy me Budweiser's Bud ever again. <laughs> Were you saying something about how like older people drinking Budweiser, like the fact that a lot of breweries didn't exist back in the day. Fact. Um, so it was kind of like you had to. Yeah, it's not totally their fault. Um, there are breweries that um, people, patients, other people have mentioned to me, like when they hear that I'm like a, a craft beer person that don't exist anymore. Uh, there were multiple times where they talked about how like uh, certain, like when Heineken came over uh, from wherever it's from, I, like I don't remember, uh, Finland, Holland, Holland. Um, and like they were like, oh my God, like look at this. And like now it's like literally produced in the United States, like at this point in time. So like they talk so much about um, like but you're absolutely right in the sense that like there, there was no Sam Adams right. until like 1990 whatever. Right. Sierra Nevada is credited for being the first ever craft beer. Really? Um, like the first one. Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale was technically the very first craft beer ever created. Wow. What year? Mm. Um, I believe 1988 or 1989, something like that. Um, yeah, my, brother, my sister was born. Same. It's crazy. That's when I was born. What is 88? 88. Damn. Yeah. And like, yeah, there's another one born? out of Connecticut. Yeah, uh, there was, was another one out of Connecticut that was also yeah. considered like Where one of the first born? craft breweries ever. Like, so they Nick. say that like, Where say that was 95. Oh, you're both 95. Yeah. Hmm. I actually think that my generation is the generation that really put craft beer on the map. Like, we were the ones that were like, yeah, this is pretty good, but we could do better than this. Like, yeah. type of deal. Just like we created all the social media things that are you guys are Are we considered the same with. generation? From 92? I think so. We, uh, we just hit the millennial mark. The yeah. tail end of the... Yeah. Yeah. A few years what after our... What does that mean? You're, You're millennial. millennial, yeah. Technically, my sister's millennial. Amy. No. I actually think that she's more of like a whatever prehistoric human is called. Uh, cave lady. Um, <laughs> <laughs> more than anything. Really? Yeah, she's the worst. No way. Well. Cheers. Yeah, um, that was a great beer and uh, we'll be back. Yeah.